As many of you guys have probably guessed, the acoustic guitar is what I identify with. I've been playing that instrument for over 25 years. I've been building acoustic guitars for over 12 years. And the idea of the electric guitar is only something that's kind of new to me. I uh, started playing the electric guitar at my shows about three years ago with my trio. And I picked up this Fender Eric Clapton Stratocaster and it's been friggin' awesome. But I by no means consider myself an electric guitar expert. And with Matt and I launching the Titlecaster, our first electric guitar, um, I found myself having conversations with electric guitar players as much as I can. And what I've learned is that I have a lot to learn. And so to that end, I actually thought that this video would be a good idea to pose the question of what is some advice that you can give to somebody who's been playing the acoustic guitar for a long time and is looking to get into the electric. Because if you're realistic about this, you should approach the electric guitar differently than the acoustic guitar. And so what I've done today is invited my good buddy Rhett Scholl onto the channel, and I'm going to ask him a couple of questions and some advice that he would give to people. Um, if you don't know Rhett, you should definitely check out his channel. He's a way bigger deal than I am. Uh, he's got uh, quite a large channel, and he does fantastic videos on just about everything about the electric guitar and live sound and studio production. He'll do an entire in-depth video on just what a PAF pickup is or what a humbucker is or what makes a gold top sound the way that it does, um, how to properly mic up different instruments. Um, just a fantastic wealth of information, hundreds and hundreds of videos. He's been doing this for a long time. So what I'm gonna do is do a FaceTime video with him, bring him on and ask him a couple questions and hopefully we can shed a little bit of light and make the process of switching from the acoustic to the electric a little bit less intimidating. All right, Rhett, well, welcome to the channel. I appreciate you coming on and doing this with me. I know you got a lot going on, so... Uh, Thanks um, for having me, man. Yeah, dude. Um, as you know, me and Matt have been building this electric guitar, and uh, it has been uh, a quite the learning curve for us, especially me. I've been playing electric acoustic guitar for so long, and um, boy, it is a whole other animal. I I, uh, I try to tell people all the time, like the electric guitar and acoustic guitar are the same instrument in in name, but in a lot of ways they're completely different. And yeah. I hadn't even realized that until. You know, I really started to play with my band with them, and I still, to this day, when electric guitar players show up to my gigs, <laughs> I, like, want to crawl under a rock. <laughs> um, so, I want to just ask you some questions for people like me. I think that there's a lot of folks out there who've been playing and are very proficient at the acoustic guitar and want to get into the electric, but it's just an incredibly intimidating world. Um, there's something about the electric guitar that the, the culture of the electric guitar where people are more DIY and they seem to be even more knowledgeable about their instruments because they're not afraid to take them apart and rewire them and do all that stuff. So um, they know a lot <laughs> and it can just be like, I'm good, I'll just stick to the acoustic. So I know that for me, one of the big things that I've been struggling with is actually finding my tone and i know not to give a blatant plug here but i know that you have actually a, a tone course but uh and but it's just that's an incredibly hard thing and uh, i don't if you could give some advice on starting from scratch how do yeah, you go about but, finding your tone well it's it's interesting and, and we should point out too that like so people on youtube probably don't know this but but you and i have known each other since 2006 like basically since yeah. I was 16. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so my family, we would always go on vacation every year down to Destin, Florida, where you're from. And uh, we would, I remember the first time we, we saw you play it was at, uh, what was it like the Bayside Wharf? Um, Baytown. Area. Baytown Wharf. Yeah, Baytown. Right, right, yeah. right. And um, we were instant fans and it kind of became like a family tradition. Okay, well, we're going to go down to Destin and go see Chris. And I remember the first time you brought one of your guitars out. It, it might have been the first acoustic you brought. It probably, it probably was. It probably was. Yep. And if I remember correctly, it was like a... Okay, this is going way back. But like an OM model with like a slotted headstock. Mm -hmm. It's still... I still have that guitar. Yeah, it's... Yeah. My very first two guitars that I built with the D on the headstock. It, one, one was an yep. OM and the other one was a parlor guitar. But yeah, that thing was yeah. a... It was a... Not pretty. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, so, no, I thought it was great. I mean, I, I, I remember being like a 16-year-old kid who was, at that time, had been playing guitar for two or three years, or three or four years, maybe, and being, like, blown away, like, oh, my God, this dude built this guitar, like, and now he's playing it, and it sounded great. But you're, you're, you're right. Like, to get to the question, you know, my path, I kind of started on acoustic, just strumming cowboy chords, and then pretty quickly after that, I, I kind of started getting into the electric world, and I would consider myself an electric guitar player primarily. And you're right in that they are two different instruments and you approach them differently in how you play and your mindset and what you are looking to get out of the instrument. At least that's what what I do. It's Mm. a completely different mindset. Acoustic guitar for me right now is a utility thing. It's when I'm doing a session or producing something and I need an acoustic sound or if I'm on a gig and I need an acoustic thing it's a utility to accomplish, you know, a part for a song. But when I think about my voice on guitar, it's, it's an electric, I'm an electric player for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it can be intimidating. Um, I, I completely understand that because it wasn't that long ago for me. It was probably 10 years ago when I was in music school where I first started getting serious about learning about electric guitar. And back then in 2010, um, you know, YouTube was around, but there weren't like guitar YouTube channels and I've never been a big forum guy. So the way I started learning about it was going down to uh, a local music store here called Atlanta discount music and just talking to the guys there. I'd be like, Hey, um, I need a, an amp. I need a tube amp. What should I get? And, and starting to just, they were super cool with me and guiding me through the process. Same thing with pedals. Like, okay, um, I need an overdrive pedal, I think. First of all, what is an overdrive pedal and what's the difference? And so that's kind of how I learned, was just like learning from the, the elders, so to speak, guys that had been playing professionally since like the 80s and been in the yeah. gear world for that long. And so what I would tell people, if you're in the acoustic world and you're thinking about getting into the electric world, um, take your time. I'm still learning. I'm still picking up new ideas and learning new concepts and things like that and messing around with my sound and my gear and everything. Uh, You don't have to learn everything at once and uh, you don't want to get overwhelmed because it can feel like drinking from a fire hose if you're coming from the acoustic side of things into the electric side. Like, what amp should I get? What do I need pedals? What kind of pedals should I get? Or should I? Should I get a tube amp or should I get a modeler or should I, you know, there's so many options nowadays, which in many ways is amazing, but it can also be really intimidating for new players to come into it. Um, But yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of what I have noticed. Like when it comes to acoustic guitar, you know, you go to the store, you pick out an acoustic guitar. A lot of times you're married to a brand before you walk in, but even if you're not, you walk in and you pick up acoustic guitars until you play one that you think sounds good. I can ask somebody who's never played guitar in their life, which one do you think sounds better? And they can tell you. But with an electric guitar, I think the undiscerning ear can go, well, that sounds like a guitar. It doesn't sound Mm -hmm. any different. So I think that's kind of a big part of the intimidation. So I think, and and you kind of hit on this, if you were to, you don't own an electric guitar, which more, I guess I already know the answer, but what is more important, the guitar or the amp? Or do I need to make sure that I buy them at a married a married combo? Um, you know, uh, do I get a, a combo amp? Do I just get an amp and then go with all my pedals? Um, and I know that that's, once again, a super deep dive question that you could spend five videos on. But, yeah. um, you know, how, how, I guess to me, how important is the amplifier? And I... And I I say that because I've learned that it almost is more important than the electric, in my opinion. Oh, not not almost. It is more important. Okay. So the amplifier, in terms of your tone and the quality of your tone, um, the amplifier is the biggest contributor. It, it takes up the largest percentage of your overall tone. Mm. And what I mean by that is, um, let's say you had $2,000 to spend yep. and you needed to buy an electric guitar and an amp. I would spend five hundred dollars on the guitar and fifteen hundred dollars on the amp. Yeah, all day, every day, um, because with you know they're they're absolutely 
are differences in electric guitars and the pickups and the construction and the, the weight and the tone and the feel and the wood that they're made of, you know, yeah. that's, that's a debate that I think is a ridiculous debate. You know, the tone wood thing, obviously totally. the wood makes a big difference in the sound and feel of a guitar. But what you're talking about there, you know, other than the pickups, uh, we're talking about differences in tone of maybe one or two percent one yeah. way or another and to a new player you're not going to be able to hear the difference between you know uh two less pauls where one has a, a maybe a chambered body and a solid body for example where you are going to hear the difference is in the amplifier and the amps circuit topology right is it a fender style amp is it a vox is it a marshall style amp what type of tubes uh, the power output the you know uh, is it a 212 a 112 a 410 uh, there's so many things that go into the sound and response of a guitar amp especially uh, specifically a tube amp not talking about modelers um, and it really does make a big difference on your tone the difference between a seven or eight hundred dollar fender deluxe reverb and a two or three thousand dollar hand wired boutique you know milkman for example uh which is basically a boutique version of a fender deluxe is very very noticeable mm. not just in the sound but in the response and the feel and this is something to understand about electric amplifiers especially for new players so uh behind me here you know i have my my wall of amps he's always showing off with the amps it's a thing yeah, i know <laughs> 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 Tim Tim Pierce said this um, years ago, and it's something that stuck with me. He's totally right. You need to make peace with the fact that your amp has one sound. Ugh, it has he's, one setting. I watched that, that video works. the other day, and I thought that was so good. Make peace with right. it. He kept saying that, make and that was it. so good. I love that. There, there are amps out there that, that do multiple things really well, and, and you can kind of have a jack-of-all-trades, but that jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none thing, most of the time rings true for mm. electric guitar amps. That's why I have so many different amps. Sure. Because this amp, for example, this divided by 13, the black one, which is an RSA 23, and this other divided by 13, FTR 37, they're totally different amps, different circuits, different tubes and everything, but they both do one thing really, really well. Mm. Um, this is like the ultimate sort of Fender amp. This is like the ultimate sort of British high watt kind of Marshall Vox. Yeah. Um, so well, that makes you, sense because I have always watched like electric guys like via the internet and been like, man, these guys are just like too busy buying gear to like get into the instrument. Just enjoy what you have. But it makes a lot more sense now, you know, because what they're really doing is like you're saying, having different amps to do different jobs. And that makes you can a lot think of about sense. it like you can kind of think about it like this: um, playing an acoustic guitar and being an acoustic player might be like uh, the equivalent of of being a charcoal artist, like drawing and illustrating with charcoal. Sure, you can do a lot with just that one shade, right? And, and, yeah. and there's a lot that can happen in there. Being an electric and getting into the electric world is like having the entire color spectrum now available to you right mm -hmm. you can now paint and illustrate with all of the colors of the rainbow and so if you're coming from that world of only painting with one or two or, or illustrating with one or two different shades into the, the color world it can be a little bit overwhelming but that's what these are these are different sort of colors on your palette same thing with pedals same thing with guitars it's all different yeah. colors and and how you combine them together is where you start to find your sound and shape your tone so, yeah, and I guess that's the answer to the first question, too, is it just kind of you have to start somewhere. Uh, and the way to do that is to kind of walk into some stores, talk to your friends, experiment, find something that you feel like, OK, this is a good jumping off point, And then yeah. and then just start working with it. Um, and to that well, before before you would even before I would even uh, recommend doing that, you need to you need to pick out some electric sounds that you really love. Mm, yeah, your favorite yeah. records, your favorite, you know, for me early on, it was David Gilmore and David Gilmore for me still is if I had to point to my favorite guitar player, it's probably David Gilmore. And I think if you listen to a lot of my playing, you can hear that like Gilmore. Yeah. influence especially in the way i use things like reverbs and delays i mean that's mm -hmm. a, i'm a huge proponent and same thing with like the edge from you too so you, you'll start to 
and you probably already have this, your favorite guitar players, or your favorite albums, your favorite bands, yeah. right? Um, Find out what their signal chain in. is. But it's less about what they're specifically using, and it's more about how they're using it. So, like, Gilmore, for example, he's known for using high-watt amps, right? And if you if you look around the internet, you're like, oh, yeah, Gilmore used high-watts. But the reality is he used a whole bunch of stuff. He used Fender Tweed amps. He used uh, the, the famous Brick in the Wall solo. Uh, was recorded straight DI into a console and was reamped through oh, a wow. Mesa Boogie Mark One, right? So it's less about the specific gear that he was using and more about how he was using it, how he was combining the the delays and and the amps and the Univibe and all the different the fuzz mm. and everything he was using. But what I would tell you is, start to hone in on a couple of things and then start to ask around, start to do your research, start to ask people. Hey, man, I love the Hendrix Band of Gypsies record. I love Machine Gun. I want to be able to get that sound. What's going on there? Sure. Okay, well, that's a that's a Strat. You know, that's a Univibe. It's a uh, it's a fuzz face, a silicon fuzz face, and it's a, a some kind of Marshall-style amp, right? That's yeah. sort of that signal chain. Uh, and then you might say, okay, well, I love Keith Richards and, you know, the Sticky Fingers era. All right, well, that's... You know, that could be a, a telly into like a Fender Tweed Deluxe, you know, guitar straight in with no real effects, no pedals or anything like that. Yeah. So you start to just kind of pick up on these things and you start to identify patterns, right? Like, oh, well, these kind of this kind of sound, I'm seeing this amp and this guitar sort of combo pop up a lot. You know, a Les Paul and a, a early Tweed amp. Okay, well, that's like ZZ Top early Billy Gibbons era kind of stuff. I love that yeah. sound. Well, there you go. You get a humbucker, a P90 guitar, and a Fender Tweed style amp, and you're off to the races off for that the, kind yeah. of sound. You know, hmm. um, so yeah, it's that's interesting. That's kind of the how fact I that you, start. the fact that you can even rattle off all that stuff is just like whoa. But it makes sense because I can kind of do the same thing with acoustic guitars and how it sounds, and and just you know, I I, I often kind of describe like the you have to learn how to listen, um, yes. like a sommelier. I think you can train most people to be close to a sommelier level. Uh, uh, a consumer of wine but i taste the difference between red and white <laughs> that's right. as far as my wine expertise goes and so right. my ear is not trained i hear overdrive on a guitar or a broken up sound on a, an electric guitar and it sounds like that to me it doesn't sound any different and so i think that what your your advice there is just you almost have to just put the time in right it's like uh because uh, i i i can't necessarily hear the difference between one guy's tone and another that it's not it's not because i can't hear it it's because i haven't really put the time in to listen you haven't and, learned uh, the context yeah that's that's what it is right you start to learn the context so if you think about like you know the famous dumble amplifier right that mm. everyone talks about and are they go for crazy crazy money yeah matt and right. i were just looking at those the other day <laughs> yeah so to me the quote-unquote dumble sound and like the the probably the best example of like the dumble sound would be um like robin ford okay if you listen to robin ford you know especially in the 80s his records he was doing in the 80s things like that that very sort of smooth mid focused overdrive sound that he was getting with with some bright top end kind of attack that's the dumble sound quote unquote now this is a generalization but so you'll start to hear these contexts and learn what the players were using. And then whenever you start to hear that, that okay, that's kind of a smooth mid-focus kind of overdrive. That sounds like a Dumble style overdrive. Mm. And then you'll hear people talking about that and see people talking about that online. Like, oh, I'm looking for that Dumble overdrive sound. Well, what sure. they're talking about is like essentially a Fender style amp, a clean-ish mid-scooped amp with some kind of very mid forward overdrive sound applied to it, either in the amplifier or with a pedal, like a tube yeah. screamer, for example. Um, so yeah, you start to you start to hone in on these things. Same thing with like the Marshall sound. I mean, there's countless examples of like a Les Paul into a Marshall, right? You think, you know, Guns N' Roses, Appetite for Destruction era. You think uh, Gary Moore, you think Paul Kossoff, you know, Bonamassa, like yeah. there's so many examples of that kind of sound. And to use your sommelier analogy, once you start to learn, because you can sense these things, you can hear these things, you just need, 
it's like learning to speak a language or, or learning. You just need the vocabulary to go along with what you're hearing to help yeah, identify absolutely. what you're hearing. Well, yeah, and, and that makes so much sense because that's kind of my job when a person commissions an acoustic guitar for me is training them to listen. And so that by the time that they're done waiting a year and a half for their guitar and it's time for me to start building it, they are now more knowledgeable of what woods that they want to use in the construction of it. But uh, um, one of my... The big things for me that I know when I uh, that is intimidating to me about going from electric, going to electric from the acoustic is uh, is just the fretboard knowledge that's required. Mm. Um, you know, I stay in my lane with my acoustic playing as a singer songwriter style. I kind of like my voicings the way that I like them. I can certainly do solos up the neck if I want to. But it's chord voicings up the neck, uh, different inversions of chords that is just like, it's a lot for me. Um, the guy, Scott Rockwood, who plays bass with me in my trio, he's just a freaking monster on the electric guitar. And I always I always joke around with him when I'm over there doing a guitar solo, I just feel like he's looking at me just going. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what I guess, what would you give as advice to somebody who's going from acoustic to the electric as a way to kind of unlock more of the secrets of the fretboard so that they're not just down there at the third fret playing cowboy chords because those what i've learned is those you can get away with them but they really aren't how the electric guitar is designed to be used uh and right. so how do i get my electric to sound the way that i should hear an electric which to me is up the neck okay cool so so there's a couple elements to this so first of all when it comes to the chord voicings and understanding the um understanding the fretboard I'm actually doing a video course on this right now. This is my next course is going to be talking about this whole subject. Um, triads. Okay. So you, if you're playing your cowboy chords, you're already playing triads, right? A triad sure. is just a three note chord, root third and fifth from that, that major scale, that chords major scale. You can play those triads up the neck. So if you were to take a C major triad, um, for example, like if I take this, yeah, it's in tune. So, you take your standard C major shape, right? Well, on, on acoustic guitar, you might just know this C major and just leave yeah. it down here, right? Well, you can also play it here. You can also play it here or here. You can also play it here or here or like uh, here or yep. here, right? So you have, just by learning these shapes, you're now accessing the entire fretboard immediately. Right. So now what happens is let's take uh, let's take an A minor. Right. Now you're starting to move up and down the neck and unlocking the fretboard. Let's take a G. Right. So let's say I had uh, an A minor C G progression. I could play it here. Right. I could play it here. Or sorry. Uh, yeah. Right. So that's based off of what's called the caged system, C A G E D, C A G E D, yes. and that means basically, you know, you have your C shape, your A shape, your G shape, your E shape, and your D shape, and you can apply those triad shapes, your cowboy chord shapes, all the way up the neck. So if you start there, you're starting to understand your triads, and you pair that with knowing your notes on the fretboard, starting with the sixth and fifth string, because a lot of these shapes, the root notes are based on the sixth and fifth string. Immediately, you can take songs that you already know down here and start playing them anywhere on the fretboard, right? From there, you can start to move shapes around. So let's say I took this, you know, like that A minor shape. That's just your standard A minor A minor bar chord, but I play it this way. Yeah. Well, let's say I added this B on top. All right, well, that's an A minor nine. Let's say, right? You just start to start moving some, some chord tones around and you could just experiment. What happens if I go here, right? If I go down, right? These mm. are all just different versions of A minor, right? So you start experimenting, and if you learn your notes on the fretboard, you start learning your intervals, you can start to figure out, okay, well, A minor nine, A minor 11, so on and so forth. So it's really not all that difficult. So I, I would recommend you start with the triads, then- And you know, the caged. It's gonna caged unlock, system. that's kind of pouring the foundation for you to um, to be able to unlock that. And I guess as you, you just have to put the time in so that it right. becomes something you're not thinking about as much. 
Um, right. Because that's also an issue that I have. I know for me, as an, you know, I go sit in with my buddies, you know, after I finish a gig, I'll run over, go check them out. And, hey, we're going to call Chris up on stage. And, like, they're doing up the neck chords like that. And I'm going, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out. I'm over there fumbling around on what chord because I don't, I don't see it. You know, right. go, oh, they're playing an A minor, you know. Right. So, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the one cool. other thing I want to point out, too, when it comes to playing, uh, changing your approach from acoustic to electric guitar. Um, one of my, my best friends and an artist I've played for for almost 10 years, Noah Guthrie. Um, Noah is an incredible songwriter, an incredible singer, and he's a fantastic acoustic player. Uh, but I've, I've kind of been poking fun at him for years that when he starts to play electric, he'll play rhythm electric during our shows. And he plays the electric like it's an acoustic. And <laughs> That's totally you, me. Yeah, yeah, you you really, if you're wanting to really get into electric guitar and embrace sort of this instrument for what it is, you don't you don't want to approach it like you're playing your acoustic with you the right hand. You're talking about with the right hand and the left hand. So, for example, yeah. like if I'm in a band, like if you and I are jamming together and you're playing rhythm and I'm playing lead, and we're playing an A minor, I'm not gonna play the entire A minor chord. Yeah. Because there's a bass player, there's a rhythm guitar. Sure. And this low end here is handled. So I'm literally gonna play the top three or four strings. And Give I can outline chords just with like the top three or four strings, even two strings sometimes, and get the same amount done. Um, mm. Especially when you start dialing in tones that have more overdrive or they might have more you know, uh, effects like long tail reverbs mm. and delays and stuff. I'm not gonna put a lot into the guitar i'm gonna let the sound do most of the work for me and i'm gonna play to the sound if that well what you're sense. saying makes so much sense because and it's kind of taking us back to what we originally were talking about i think that the reason why a lot of times you give me like i was telling in the opening that i'm i'm running everything through a kemper um yep. because for me i don't have a tone and i figured that's a great way for me to kind of find my tone by having a kemper that i can kind of experiment with different amps but because I play the electric guitar a lot like I play the acoustic guitar, I'm not utilizing those amplifier tones the way that they're meant to be used. So I might go, oh man, this amp sounds like crap, but it really doesn't. I'm not putting it in its right context and I'm banging away on all six strings. So I'm kind of bringing out sounds that it's not meant to bring out. Um, and I think that you hit on something there that is, that's probably one of the most important things when it comes to finding your tone or just getting into the the uh, uh, the electric is understanding that you need to play it differently in order for all of the other things to fall into place. Uh, yes. And mm. a good way to learn that is transcribe stuff. So, you know, when you're learning electric, pick out some of your favorite songs and learn not just the solos. I mean, we all love learning solos and like we're all trying to work on soloing. But what's more important than soloing, especially if you're going to be gigging, is playing rhythm and learning what parts to play. Like yeah. when I'm when I'm on a gig, 90% of my time is spent playing chords or outlining chords or playing simple parts that that go. So I, my approach to just guitar in general is uh, what serves the song. Yeah. Right? I'm not like I'm not a virtuoso guitar player. And, and I'm not even interested in guitar for the sake of like becoming the best guitar player I can. Sure. I love songs. And I love the whole uh, the holistic approach to the song. And my entry point into making music is the guitar. This is just the instrument that I settled on. Um, mm. And so for me, the way I approach it, whether I'm playing acoustic or electric, is what's serving the song best. And what that means is most times I'm playing, I'm outlining chords, I'm playing behind, letting the vocal come through, listening to what the bass and drums are doing. And so I'm not playing a, soloing a lot. Yeah. So what I would tell you to do if you're learning is take some of your favorite songs and learn all the parts. Don't just learn the solo, learn the rhythm parts, learn how they're outlining. Like in verse two, you might hear the electric do something cool. What What's going on there? And if you know that and you can apply it over the chord progression that's going on, then you can start to unlock like, oh man, over these three chords, they're doing this thing. I didn't even know you could do that over those chords. That's cool. I'm going to take that trick and use it later in my own play. Um, same thing yeah. with tones, learning tones, you know, like, uh, wow, I would have never thought to put a tremolo on this, but just having that tremolo, that modulation is totally opening up the sound to a new, a new space. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's a deep, a deep 
conversation but um yeah i think I it's super cool though stuff oh me too yeah. I, I grew up in a family where my dad's a musician so we always talked about when you're in a band everybody's got a job your job is mm-hmm. to listen is the most important job is it not, yep. not to go out there and it be about you and, and you're saying exactly that which i think is super cool um yeah dude i think that's a really good all of this is just really useful i think for uh anybody who's looking to get in obviously there is no answers that's what we've learned uh, but uh it's 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 really just a matter of kind of getting your foot in the, in the door and getting going on it. So uh, I know for me, I feel like I'm getting more confident with it. Um, there's just uh, there's just so much. It's uh, it's a lot. But uh, with uh, me launching the line of electric guitars, I don't want to be a total dummy. And uh, uh, I know that a lot of your videos have helped me, even just in my process of trying to understand why one pickup does one sound and one pickup does another. It's been super useful yeah. in that sense, and that's. I understand why you have a channel doing what you do because it's almost you can never not uh, you can never run out of things to talk about. <laughs> yeah, man. I and like I said, like I'm still learning, especially from from the older guys, the guys like Tim Pierce and yeah, and Pete they've been doing and Thorn it. and the guys that have been doing it for a really long time. Uh, it, it's like you, you just it's like anything else, man. The longer you do it, it just becomes second nature and. I'm just I'm really fascinated by this instrument and it's what you can do with it and what like the younger players are starting to do with it and the new sounds yeah. that people are are going for there it really is limitless and so I understand that it can be intimidating it was intimidating for me for a long time but once you start to get some of the fundamentals once you understand how an electric guitar interacts with an amp and how different pedals and different effects, what they're doing and how they're changing your sound. Once you start to understand those fundamentals, man, it really, the learning curve, you just, you start to understand a lot more, a lot quickly. Yeah. Um, so take, take your time. This is not something you're gonna learn in a week. You know, it's a lifelong pursuit, which is part of what I love about it. And um, just know that you will find your sound and you'll find it in failing to sound like your heroes. Mm. I I found my sound because I failed to sound like David Gilmour and Derek Trucks and yeah. Robin Ford and The Edge. Like I don't sound like those guys. But you but sound like Rhett. In, yeah, in my pursuit of trying to get there, I f- developed my own thing. I love so. it. That's super awesome. Well, dude, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to do this. I know that you are heading up to the cold north to do a, to a, do a show, and that you're finally back in the saddle gigging, and that's super first, good to hear. First full band show since January of 2020. Dude, that's awesome. That's awesome, so, man. Yeah. Well, exactly. you have a, have a safe travels and enjoy the show, and and uh, we'll send some people your way. And I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Thanks, man. Yeah. All right, so I hope that that video helped you guys feel a little bit less intimidated if you're thinking about switching over to the electric guitar. Please take the time to check out Rhett's channel. It is just Rhett Scholl, um, and it's just a wealth of information. Such a fantastic dude, such a fantastic channel. Um, you can learn so much, not just about the electric guitar, but just about live sound and the guitar as a whole. Just a great dude. Check out his courses as well. He has those online. Links are on his channel in his descriptions of his videos. And if you guys have questions or comments or things that you'd like to add to the conversation, let us know. Put those in the comment section below. And uh, make sure you check out the t-shirts we have for sale, um, which are also linked below the video. And um, like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks, guys.